God Gosling, ha, I bought this shirt. I look very hetero everywhere I go now. I'm just kidding, I'd suck this guy's dick. Only God forgives. The true story of Jesus Christ. Kidding. This movie has nothing to do with God. God, I don't think, likes this movie. This movie is an insult to everything biblical. I actually really loved it. It's fucking weird, it's trippy, it's hypnotic. Certainly not for everybody, okay? But the number one thing I appreciate about this is because it's written and directed by Nicholas Winden Refn, the director of one of my all-time favorite movies, Drive. <laughs> Look, another picture of Ryan Gosling. God. Here's what I love about it. You could tell this guy had complete control over this film. I love the tone, I love the imagery behind the cinematography. Absolutely beautiful. Magnifico! For some reason I'm doing these Italian hands today. The whole time it just felt like a dream. A weird, violent dream. You just felt like violence could go down at any given moment. From beginning to end. Even though it's not filled with violence. But don't get me wrong, when it's violent, it's violent. It is sometimes really sick. Sometimes. Sometimes, people walk out of the theater when something is just a little too nasty and they weren't expecting it. Like the three old, I'm assuming Jewish people, that left the theater. I just love the way it was executed. It's like the anti-movie structure. From the trailer, you think you're gonna get a simple movie about Ryan Gosling going out there and seeking revenge on the people who killed his brother. Please now, nothing like that. It is told completely weird. This film is just weird. It's trippy. It's fucking strange as fuck. Strangest things I've ever seen in a movie have happened in this film. And that's why I appreciate it so much. Because this guy obviously made the movie he just really wanted to make. I felt like he had a dream and was like, fuck, I'm gonna put everything I just dreamed about on the screen. It's wildly unique, fascinating as ever, and I could see why it's not for everybody, because it goes against almost everything we say works in a movie. Doesn't make it bad, though. They don't make stupid moves. And, of course, the number one reason I saw this movie, Ryan Gosling. Yes! Yes, 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 yes. I'm gonna give a hint here. As soon as I'm gonna do an episode of Top 10 Dicks I'd Like to Suck, he's in the top three. Anyway, Ryan Gosling really liked him in this. Everyone's like he's doing the same performance he did in Drive. No, he's not. Watch the fucking movie again and you'll see he's not doing the same thing. In Drive, he, he's very, you know, you're more sincere. There's a lot of more sympathy. This guy just seems like a complete emotionless psychopath. Like he seems confused, lost, and you feel like horrible things happened in his childhood and he does a great job of portraying it. He's not exactly the person you relate to, but he's fun to observe. You would not want to fuck with this guy. No. No, you, you feel like he has the capability to just rip your penis off with his bare hands. Which I know will not happen with us. Another great performer in this movie, Kristen Scott Thomas. Wow, this has got to be the freakiest mom I've ever seen portrayed on the screen. You get hints that she probably sexually abused her children, but you don't know for sure, so you can't hate her for it because they don't really make it clear for you yet. But regardless of that, she says some really obnoxious things. The C word is the most common word she uses. Not cat. No. Not that word. Cunt. Anyway, she goes far beyond a judgmental mother. She's like the mob boss of this crime family. And uh, she's very controlling. You can totally see why Ryan Gosling is the way he is. And the two complement each other's performances quite exquisitely. And another, another great performance in this movie. The scary Asian guy. The, the guy who plays the cop, the antagonist of the film. This dude, no. Whoa, don't want to meet him in real life. I don't want to commend him. Because he's so good at it that I actually believe this is what this person's probably like in real life. He's old, yet... You feel like he can kick your ass at any moment. And not in some crazy kung fu way. He has a sword and shh. And apparently he likes to chop off people's arms. I don't know why, but it's it's a thing he likes to do. I, it's, it must be some type of eroticism. I, I don't know. But one thing about these performances that I love, there's not a lot of talking in this movie. And I think people are just not getting this film. In the film, like, these guys... They communicate mainly through body language and expression. And yes, there's not a lot of talking, so people are like, oh, they're thinly written performances. I don't think so. It's very apparent these actors were all on the same page, all knowing what's going on in each other's minds, and they're able to communicate a film so well where you can tell what they're thinking and feeling without them having to say a single fucking thing. Isn't that impressive? Are you going to write that book, Brian? How is that novel coming along? Huh? Got to begin in the middle of the night? Some of the score, not all of the score, but some of the score, fantastic. You know, Nicholas Winter have been really good at picking good composers for his films. Too bad I don't remember the composers' names. What I will say, 
I'm not gonna give it away, but the last five to ten minutes has some weird shit that goes on where you're like, why the fuck did this happen? I don't know how to react to this. Where did, how did it just get to this point so suddenly in such a creepy fashion? And it almost ruined the entire movie for me. But, you know, like if I just block that part out of my mind and remember the, the first 80 minutes, fantastic. Just great time. But the last five to 10 minutes, oh God, don't, don't get it. I just don't understand it. If, you, if you're able to time the movie, just turn it off before you reach that point. It makes no fucking sense. Let me get straight to the point here. All in all, I gotta say, Only God Forgives got it right! Alright guys, thanks for checking out my show. Why don't you go ahead, scroll that comment box below, and tell me, what did you think of Only God Forgives? Did you hate it? And can you tell me what the hell the last five to ten minutes was about? And if you want to go ahead and follow me on Twitter, you can click the link right here. Tweet me, I'll tweet you back. We'll look cool together. Maybe we can go out on a date. Male or female? Female, preferably. Male? Maybe. Depends on your body. Can't date a fat guy. And if you want to see a more in-depth review of Only God Forgives, go ahead and check out my show called Reasons to See. And we have special guests on the show, Michelle Q. She is Mexican. There are no Mexicans in Thailand. That is what I learned. And last but not least, if you want to get updated every time a new review is out, go ahead and click on this button about my penis to subscribe. That's right, people. People. Penis. Sounds kind of similar, doesn't it? Huh. I can tell you God forgave me, because he blessed me with this thing.